Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to another edition of Photoshop for Video. This week, we're going to complete our look at the Refine Edge command. It's a great way to take an initial selection and dramatically improve it. Let's see how. Now, with this image, I want to make an initial selection, and if I look at the channels palette, you'll see that the red channel has really got great separation. Notice how the background is dark and the flower is light. We can go ahead and duplicate this channel with a right click and we'll name it Selection. With that channel selected, we can go ahead and refine it. Let's press Command L for levels and what we want to do is pull the black slider in so all the black areas go dark and the white slider in so the gray areas go light. And this will work well, but you don't have to get there in just one pass. So you'll see we have a few stray pixels out here in the edges. You can grab the paintbrush, press D for default colors, and simply paint. There we go, painting with black. And this is normal. You'll sometimes get a few stray pixels when dealing with a channel-based mask. Invoke the Levels command again, and we'll simply pull that slider in to force the white to white. There we go. And let's balance that out just a little bit. There we go. Click OK. Grab my paintbrush and paint in the few stray white pixels that are inside the flower edge there. And it looks like we got it. Now, turning this initial rough alpha into a selection is easy. Just command click on its thumbnail or control click on a PC. And then you can go ahead and throw that layer away. Once you've got the initial selection, you'll want to choose Select Refine Edge. Now, we looked at the basics of this tool last week. I want to walk you through how it works from top to bottom. When you do the Refine Edge, it's going to create an initial selection for you. And it's very important that the preview box is checked and that you keep the description area open. You may want to zoom in so you can clearly see your edges as you work. You can adjust the radius command here and this will actually help with any soft transition areas and go ahead and sort of smooth that out a bit. And contrast actually makes them a little bit crisper. So in a way you want to get a nice crisp clean edge first. Then, once you've got a clean edge, you'll smooth out some of the bumps in it so it doesn't have any odd spikes and put a small one to three pixel feather on the edges. Lastly, to finish it out, you'll have to go ahead and contract it. So by contracting the edge here, we eat away at some of the edge there until that fringe goes away. Now remember, as you drag, you have to give it time to update. So be careful that you don't go too far. That's looking pretty good, and I can now press the F key to cycle through my modes. The first shows it as a selection. Second displays quick mask. You could double click, in fact, and change the quick mask color if that helps you see it better. And what you're looking for is trying to remove any fringe. Then view it over black, which is useful for a light edge, and then over white, looking for dark fringe. And lastly, you can view your matte file and look to see if there's any holes. If there are any spots in the mat, you can go ahead back into quick mask mode and touch those up. I'll click OK and I've got my initial selection in my channels palette. Simply click the button that says save selection as a channel and there's my alpha. Turn it on and we can just save this document. File, save as, and we will save this as a TIFF file with the alpha channel included. No compression, make sure the byte order matches the computer you're working on and click OK, and it's done. And it's as simple as that. The Refine Edges command is a great way to take a basic selection and make it much cleaner. This is really going to make your compositing that much better, and I highly encourage you to make it part of your workflow. For Photoshop for Video, I'm Rich Harrington, and be sure to check out our resource blog at photoshopforvideo.com where you can find out how to subscribe and get our podcast for free, both in iTunes and the Adobe Media Player.